Sonic was the very first Sega Genesis game that I had. Uh, my parents got the Sega Genesis Model 1, and it was the pack-in game for that system. I remember playing Sonic for the first time, and I was hooked by the time I got to the second stage. The music, the responsive controls, the different zones, all of it sparked something in me that I still feel a version of today when I go back and play that, or any of the immediate sequels for the Genesis. Sonic to me is like a sports team is for a lot of people. Sonic is my Knicks. Sonic is my Giants, my Canes, my Seahawks. Through thick and thin, good release and not so good release. <laughs> From scoring goals to fumbling the ball, I'll always come back to Sonic because Sonic has been there through most parts of my life. Like Star Trek is to me as well, it will always be there as my comfort food of entertainment. I will forever look at the original Sonic with fondness because of nostalgia, but does Sonic still hold up today almost 33 years later? You may take my word with a grain of salt because of what I just said, but let's take a quick dive in and see if it still holds up. Right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and admit that some people may not like the original Sonic anymore because the series has changed up gameplay style several times and this game might feel too slow or limited in gameplay versus other Sonic games or other platformers that are out there in the world. Sonic started as a 2D platformer which added and changed up with each new game. Then went to 3D and kept going through various gameplay changes and iterations to the version we see today being open world with focused levels in Sonic Frontier. Thankfully, we still have newer retro inspired Sonic games like Sonic Mania and Sonic Superstars, as well as modernized releases of the original classics in Sonic Origins. But even these have a core Sonic feel that got its start in the original Sonic game. Now, the hallmark of a classic Sonic game to me is tight, responsive, and predictable controls, fun level design, difficulty ramps up as you progress through the game, and catchy and energetic music, among other things, of course. Now let's dive into some gameplay and controls. Sonic has a signature feel which includes specific jump physics, walk, run, and stopping behaviors, as well as how Sonic maintains momentum when going up, down, and around ramps and slopes and loop-de-loops. As changed ever so slightly in the first few games, but mainly with the introduction of spin dashes and elemental shields. Sonic still feels responsive, predictable, and easy control to this day. When running, he starts slower but quickly builds up momentum. Jumping is quick and precise, allowing you to take out many enemies by jumping on or into them. All of this was remarkable back in 1991 because you had lots of platformers of various kinds and many of them felt slippery, imprecise, and were a, just a general challenge to control. So it was kind of like you were holding onto an oiled up bar of soap. Sonic felt great from the first game. Again, this holds up really well today in my opinion. So, one thing about the original Sonic, you only play as Sonic, because that was the main character, and there was no Spin Dash. Spin Dash, of course, was introduced in the next game. So, with newer releases, there are some quality of life updates where you can do, do other things, which we'll get into in a little bit, like play other characters, Spin Dash, play with other control schemes with customization, etc. But let's dive into the game. If you haven't played a classic Sonic game before, there are different ways people like to play this game. Because this was released in the era of arcade games, many people play for the high score, to get the high score possible. You get a high score by killing badnik enemies, as which they're called, from getting rings, completing special stages, some destructibles will also net you some points as well. Also, you get a time bonus for quickly speeding to the end of the level, which can net you some more points. 
Special stages appear as giant ring gateways that you have to jump through at the end of the level and only show if you get 50 rings. In special stages, you have to navigate a rotating maze to get to one of six Chaos Emeralds. Yes, six. We'll get to that in a minute. To get to the best ending, you have to collect all six Emeralds. If you don't, well, Robotnik still wins and he'll taunt you after beating the rest of the game. So in the original Sonic, you got six Chaos Emeralds, while in the sequels, you normally got seven which would allow you to turn into an overpowered version of Sonic called Super Sonic. In this game, there is no Super Sonic. That wasn't a thing yet. And along the way, of course, at the end of each zone with Act 3, you get a version of Robotnik and one of his, um, one of his uh, robots, one of his traps, one of his things um, that he, he tries to, to kill you with at the end of the level. So, addressing level design. Sonic is broken up into different zones, each with their own theme, level design, and unique enemies. In each zone, you have three acts. Sonic has held up really well because each zone challenges you in unique ways and calls for slightly different play styles, which they introduce to you slowly and then ramp up. Some zones might require more precision platforming, while others uh, require more fast reaction to upcoming enemies and jumping out of hazards. Generally, each zone has at least two acts where the first two introduces you to the mechanics and gimmicks of the level. The second and third ramps it up a little bit and mixes elements from previous levels to keep it fresh and make it just a little bit more difficult. Let's jump into each stage and cover a little bit about each stage. So, Green Hill Zone. Now, this is a classic first stage that's been forever replicated in Sonic. Introduces the game mechanics and concept of multiple paths, higher, lower, middle path, generally that you see in, in other Sonic games. Of course, you get the the theme of like more tropical green everything starting out natural and at peace generally the higher path for the game generally rewards you with less enemies more rings more collectibles middle generally the default path while the lower path is generally the slowest with a lot more traps hazards and enemies let's move on to marble zone I love the Marble Zone. This is one of my favorite levels. I, I mean, the original Sonic, of course, is great, but uh, this zone forces the player to slow down a bit and do some more precision platforming. There are some unique elements with spike platforms that can raise and lower. There are some outdoor elements as well as underground parts with lava, which is kind of neat. It really starts to show off the unique Sonic branded design variety that I fell in love with. So, like I said previously, when you hit level 2, or zone 2 I should say, marble zone, is when it starts to really mix up a bit and, and become unique. Spring Yard Zone. So this is really where you get the casino and pinball it's inspired zone with lots of springs and bumpers and of course you'll see that in later sonic games as well more casino oriented but this is where you will start bouncing around a bit more you have slow moving sequential platforming blocks that break up the speed every so often you have a slightly more industrial theme now as you can see it's getting progressively more uh, city-like, more built-up and mechanized, where the buildings in the background and trees in the foreground still. It makes you feel like you're in a city, generally. And of course, in this one, there's lots of tall walls and half-pipes to keep the momentum going in certain sections. Now we're getting the Labyrinth Zone. Welcome to the water level! <laughs> It 
this level forces you to slow down in areas to do more precision platforming. Essentially, when you're underwater as well, you are slower to react to oncoming obstacles. You're slower to move and you have to constantly seek air from large bubbles that randomly pop out of the ground or from the surface, of course, once you get back up to the surface. If you're not careful and you don't time your breaths between those little bubble uh, parts that come up, then you can run out of air quickly and lose a life. This level sparked the anxiety of a generation of Sega fans. Just take a listen. I always enjoyed the stage music otherwise, and the architecture of this level was kind of cool. It was very, very unique for the time, and beyond the water, the, the constant threat of drowning in the water, I did enjoy navigating the level. On to Starlight Zone. This zone gives you a bit more of a break after Labyrinth Zone. It's really neat. I really enjoyed it because the nighttime highway theme is kind of introduced here. And I'm glad how they repeat it in future Sonic games. Uh, you do get some precision platforming with Pits of Death if you're not careful once you get to further acts of this uh, zone. And honestly, this is one of my favorite Sonic Zone themes. The level design and the music theme is just Oh, it's so great. Uh, I absolutely love it and I still love it to this day. Now we get on to Scrap Brain Zone. Now this level ramps up the difficulty as the final stretch before the end boss. Most everything is out to either burn you, spike you, crush you, or drop you into a pit of death, so watch out. Hopefully at this point you've built up enough extra lives in case you don't time your jumps right or you find yourself without any rings for an extended period of time. It happens, right? I do love how you finish the first two acts just to believe you're headed to the final boss when no! You're brought back to essentially Labyrinth Zone Act 4. You thought you had left that water zone behind, but nope, you get in for one more shot at a water level. <laughs> and now, we finally get to the final zone. The epic music that comes on, you know it, it feels really final. You feel that, like the stakes are high. Uh, you get your final showdown with Robotnik, of course, the main enemy of Sonic 1. And most of Sonic games, right? You don't have any rings in Final Zone, so of course that ups the ante a little bit. It's fairly easy if you're paying attention. If not, it can take a little bit longer to beat, or you could just get careless and get crushed, right? Uh, yeah, so again, this final boss is pretty easy and straightforward, even if you're not used to um, Sonic bosses. Again, you have no rings. It's, you're either going to get crushed or you're not. There's no other enemies in the zone, so uh, there we go. And then you beat the game, and if you've gotten all six Chaos Emeralds, you get the good ending, right? As far as music goes, generally, as you've heard, the music was stylized like mid to late 80s synth music to really take advantage of the unique Sega Genesis's sound hardware. Coming off the Master System and earlier Genesis games, 
Sonic was a breath of fresh air and was an instant classic in the music department as well. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty fantastic. In my opinion, I feel like the Sega Genesis has some amazing audio tracks, but Sonic definitely used its own in-house developed sound engine and was, like I said, different than a lot of other Sega Genesis releases. So that being said, with a lot of other Sega Genesis games in the day, I used Game Genie, and here are some Game Genie codes I'm going to be throwing on the screen right now. Use those Game Genie codes with your Game Genie, or if you have a favorite emulator, you can go ahead and use a lot of them in there as well. It's kind of fun. I really do like Game Genie codes because they, they, they toss up the variety a little bit. They make it a little bit more fun to go back and replay some some spots are a little bit harder or something like that but also you do have a couple of main codes that i love to use sometimes you have the level select and sound select code which is up down left right a and start you hold a and start until you go in and you'll get the level select screen right there and then you also have the debug mode as well which is a variation of this up C, down C, left C, right C. Hold A and start until the level starts. And then you'll see a bunch of numbers on the top left corner of your screen where the score generally is. And you know that you're in debug mode. Then you can go ahead and cycle through the different objects objects that you can place. You turn into an object and you can soar all the way to the end level if you want. Um, just generally pretty fun to do that. So the most common way that you can find the original Sonic outside of mobile ports these days is Sonic Origins Collection that is out for most major game console platforms and Steam on PC. This version of Sonic 1 adds a couple of things that make the experience either fresh for old hat players like myself or a better experience for new players. For one thing, you get widescreen support. This may make it easier to navigate levels and play higher speed sections. You also get points instead of lives, so there's no risk of ending, uh, ending up having no lives if you keep dying in a certain section, which is kind of nice. You can play the game as different characters for more variety in gameplay. Of course, you get Sonic, you can play as Tails, that can fly, Knuckles can glide and smash through some barriers, and of course Amy has her trusty hammer. You also can play the game with spin dash and drop dash abilities that were introduced in later games. So this can actually make speedrunning really fun, or of course you can get through certain sections in new ways. Um, you can also, if you mess up a special stage, you can spend a coin that you earn and try it again right away. The nice thing as well is it saves your progress as you play. If you're mid game and you just wanna walk away, there you go, you can do that. Uh, it also includes a original mode as well with a, like a four by three aspect ratio boxy view with limited lives. It tries to make it feel more like the original Sonic game, even though it's just a cropped view of the newer release. Uh, it also connects with the later titles in a story mode with some new cut animated cutscenes, which is kind of nice. It's very nice to kind of connect everything together. Um, in this release, if you enter the level select code, as I mentioned, up, down, left, right, A, it brings you to level select and gives you some other extra tweaking options, including disabling the spin dash, adding elemental shields from Sonic 3, character selection, among other options in there. So check it out. When this version launched, there were some nasty gameplay bugs that have been mostly ironed out since, mostly, but also other individual listings for the single releases of Sonic 1 and the other games were removed from those game stores. So um, this may be your only option to legally play the game to play Sonic 1. Emulation is always an option as well as playing one of the many older releases of Sonic compilations from the past 30 years. Uh, just avoid the Game Boy Advance version at all costs. Some compilations also had some weaker audio, some not so great emulation of the Sega Genesis. Some compilations also had some weaker audio, some not so great emulation of the Sega Genesis audio. So may watch out for that. But this release is 
pretty good on Sonic 1's audio. If you haven't played the original Sonic before, you might be surprised at how well it holds up. You might get frustrated with a couple of the later levels, but in a time where people are seeking out roguelikes, uh, where you're rewarded for repeated attempts or playthroughs, Sonic will reward you for a quicker platforming, general speed, and going back to collect all Chaos Emeralds in a single playthrough. And it can be tough without modern save states, but thankfully the new releases have that. Um, and they're, give, they're a little bit more forgiving as well. So, Sonic is currently available on Sonic Origins, Sonic Origins Plus version, on Steam, Xbox devices, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. Also is, I believe, still available on iOS and Android mobile devices by itself. And of course, you can find a version of Sonic 1 on many compilations from the past 30 years, like I said. Personally, I'd recommend the original Sonic copy, of course, if you can get it. I'd also recommend Sonic Jam version on the Sega Saturn if you can get to it, because there are some really cool other difficulty settings on there and some quality of life changes that the team made. Um, I also recommend Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. And of course, Sonic Origins on modern platforms is pretty good as well, especially with the uh, 16 by 9 and all the, those other uh, additions that I mentioned. So thank you so much for jumping in this video today, and I hope you had a good time, and I hope you also agree with me. If you don't agree with me, or if you do agree with me, go ahead and put your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to read them, and I'd love to comment back at them as well, and I'll see you on the next Sonic video, and next retro video that I do. Game on.